You've heard of Linux, you've heard of Scratch, and completely unrelated, you've probably heard of Linux from Scratch, a tutorial for building a Linux system completely from the ground up. But have you ever heard of Linux on Scratch? I'll show you what this is in just a moment. When I say Scratch, yes, I'm talking about the children's programming language, the drag and drop language that teaches you the fundamentals of how programming works. This is not the first time I've seen someone do something really dumb in this language. For example, this person wrote a Linux kernel module in Scratch. It is a very simple module that just outputs some text, but it is running as a kernel module. Also, the same person made a very simple operating system. Once again, it is very, very, very simple, but it is an operating system. Just in case you're wondering how these work, the user also wrote a Scratch to C compiler, which might be the most inefficient way you could ever write C, but it is a thing you can do. Now, these are very much just experiments, sort of demonstrating that doing this is actually possible. There's no real function to them. But what if you wanted to get a real operating system working? Say, for example, Linux. And this user on Reddit going by the name of Billman66 wanted to do exactly that. Linux on Scratch. Nope, not Linux from Scratch, a build of RISC-V Linux running on Scratch 3.0. Hi, I've been working on writing a RISC-V emulator on Scratch blocky code, and just last week I released it. It took months of work, but here it is. Use the Turbo Warp link so it runs with any kind of speed. So you can run it on the main Scratch website, but Turbo Warp is a thing that compiles the Scratch into JavaScript, which apparently makes it run faster. And going by my testing, it goes from not being usable to running like a really slow SSH connection, which is definitely an improvement. Honestly, I never thought I would say that compiling something to JavaScript makes it run faster. But I guess they're the first for everything. Let's just go and restart the page and actually start it up from the start. So if we go and click on the green flag and then click the run button. Now, in the future, you would have the ability to go and like import in different ROMs. There's currently no explanation about how those ROMs would work. So for now, let's just use the main one. Clicking on run, it's going to go and start up the kernel. Now, this is going to take a bit of time, not as long as you might expect. Considering this is a very, very stripped down system, there's not real. Yeah, there we go, it's already done. There's not many additional things to worry about loading here. Due to Scratch being, well, Scratch and not being something intended to make Risk 5 emulators, this isn't actually a real TTY. This is an interpretation of a TTY made just so you can have the output actually functioning. So if you run this yourself and notice that certain things don't behave exactly like they should, that's going to be why. Also, from what I can tell, this isn't running any established sort of distro. This isn't an Alpine, Arch, Void, Gentoo, Ubuntu, Debian, or anything else out there like that. This very much seems to be a specifically crafted thing to get it at all light enough to be functional in this environment. Currently, this is running the Linux 6.1.14 kernel, and there's not a ton available on it. There is some things, but like, don't expect everything you want to be here. It does have BusyBox though. Thanks to that, we do have things like, who am I? As we can see, I am the root user. There are no user accounts in the system. It is just the root account. That is all you get. There are no man pages. You don't need them. They just take up extra space. There's no LSBLK. There's no FDisk. Just the very core fundamentals of getting a Linux system working. Along with a couple of things to just demo how the system functions. For example, we have CoreMark. CoreMark is a very simple benchmarking tool. Now, running a benchmark on this runs about as well as you might expect. It's going to take a bit of time to go, but when it does, you can probably tell from it not showing the output, the result isn't going to be the most exceptional output you could get. Now, to be fair, there are systems out there that run a lot slower than this. But... 
there are systems out there that are not expensive that run considerably better than this. Along with a project called Duct Tape. Now Duct Tape is a very lightweight JavaScript engine and this project includes a file that every JavaScript developer obviously needs to have. So let's run Duct Tape fizzbuzz.js. Give it a second to run and we've all seen fizzbuzz before. Also, you don't get clear either. Now, as for the text editor, it does come with one, not one that you would likely find yourself using, like Vi, like Emacs, like Vim. No, as you can probably see from my previous attempt, it has Ed. Now, Ed is a program that I'm sure I could learn how to use if I sat down and tried to learn how to use it. I'm not gonna do that, so we're just gonna ignore that's there. If you know how to use Ed though, go ahead and play with it. But if you just look around the system, you'll notice that this is just a regular Linux system. If we go up to the root, like all of the stuff you'd expect to be here is going to be here. You can go and examine those files, check them out for yourself. This is an actual Linux system that maybe you wouldn't want to run like as an actual system. But by all accounts, is Linux running on Scratch? One of the nice things about a Scratch project is all of the code is effectively open source. If we go to see inside and then click through the sprites down here, we can see how each of the different elements are working. This is the actual RISC-V emulator itself. It is quite a bit of code. Also, that's just me scrolling horizontally. I can also scroll down as well. And considering how far I can scroll down, there's probably, yeah, a lot of stuff hidden down here as well. If you want to go and examine it though, you can absolutely go and do so. This is the thing that's actually doing the terminal output. This one is controlling the user input. This is a lot more straightforward. And even without understanding Scratch, you can probably see what is happening here. If you press space, it does this key event, so on and so forth. And then the run button is the thing that actually tells it to start up. Like this is very much the simplest part of the entire project. Now I know what Linux is and I understand what is happening here, but probably because of the general audience of Scratch, nobody on the Scratch website seems to care. This has 870 views. Now for context, there are things on this site that regularly get tens of thousands of views. Yeah, this is an absolutely nobody but barely anyone's seen this. With that being the case though, the dev still has some plans for the future. For example, actually providing a means to do the whole thing with changing out the ROMs. I will release the toolchain and standard library soon that will allow you to compile and run your own C programs on the emulator. For now, just use the ROM that's included. Also, this work is based on prior work by GitHub user CN Law, who wrote a RISC-V emulator in C. Now, future versions of this emulator written in Scratch will be uploaded as completely separate projects, so follow him if you want to actually see that come along. One thing the system is completely missing is any sort of network access whatsoever. Scratch by default, from my understanding, doesn't have any network access, but there is a way to do it making it only work on Turbo Warp. For that, there is apparently a socket extension to go and do so. And someone made a joke about running aptitude commands here. Someone else in another comment made a joke about SSHing into the system, and he was thinking of making a working SSH client for this thing. Now, that would be absolutely disgusting to run, but I wanna see it because that would be stupid. SSHing into a low-powered server with a terrible connection is already bad enough. I don't even want to know what SSHing into this thing would actually be like with an SSH client written specifically for this thing that hasn't had years and years of optimization. This is not the only emulation project this developer has in mind. As a Linux and Bash enjoyer myself, I am loving this. Do you have any other plans for things in this area, such as other OSs, or adding on to this one? I think I'm pretty much done with this emulator for now, but I did just get done writing an 8086 emulator in JavaScript that runs DOS and Windows, and I designed it so that it doesn't use bitwise operators, so it's super easy to port to scratch, and that's what I'm going to do. 
You know? Sure. Sure. Why not? Sure. I Look, I don't have anything negative or positive to say about this. Go ahead and do it. See what happens. I absolutely love stuff like this. Not because it's a productive way to use your system. Not because anybody should realistically want to use it. But because it's just cool. It's cool that someone sat down and said, Hey, I want to make a RISC-V emulator in Scratch. Because I want to run Linux on a Scratch-based system. Is there any reason why I want to do that? No, it's cool, and that's all that matters. Be sure to go and check this out for yourself, see how badly it runs on your system, and I'm sure considering that some of you guys have fairly low power systems, it's going to run exceptionally well. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I wouldn't... Is this something you would find yourself running? Do you think this is cool? Go with that one. Do you think this is cool? If you do, let me know why, and if you don't, I definitely want to know why. Uh, if you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and never stop doing stupid things. It's nothing but fun.